As you wish. Hey guys, uh, back with another video, uh, impressions video on Pillars of Eternity, uh, a game only on the PC, uh, kind of a spiritual successor to old computer RPGs, uh, you know, back in the 90s, Baldur's Gate, Baldur's Gate 2, Icewind Dale, uh, games that I have never played before. In fact, this is kind of my entry into this sort of subgenre of RPGs, and, um, you know, I had a great time with this game. I, I think it's a fantastic game. Uh, there are a lot of little things that kind of bother me about this game, though. It's it's one of those games that I think is greater than the sum of its parts. Uh, I'll go and in, I'll go into detail a bit later. I don't want this video to go on too long, but uh, yeah, it's it's a it's a fantastic game. Uh, you know, a Kickstarter success story. It was one of those first. It was one of the first really big games on Kickstarter. I made like a ton of money, and it turns out people want this style of game. Um, and I, I certainly want to dive into the older uh, computer RPGs after playing through this game. Um, but uh, let's let's start off with the, the, the story to this game, which is, I think, the main draw uh, with this game. Uh, and right off the bat, I will say, the main plot in this game, I, I'll be honest, I didn't actually find it all that engaging. Uh, you basically, you, you're kind of like a, a foreigner to this the land of um, Deer... I think it's called, like, Deerwood. It's like... I, I, I probably am pronouncing that wrong. Like, a part of, like, the Eastern Reach. Like, it's this giant world, and the world's called Eora, I think it is. Uh, and this game takes place in one section of this world. Uh, and it's kind of like a forest land uh, type section. I think for sequels, they'll probably, you'll go to other places, which, uh, starting the game off, like, in the character selection screen, uh, you kind of, you make your character right off the bat, and uh, you kind of, you choose their history, uh, and I, I chose like a drifter character in my class. I chose a fighter class uh, for the beginning. Uh, and he, my character, I, I, I had him uh, originate from the the white that wins. I think that was what it was called, uh, which is like a, a winter, like a, a winter location that you don't actually ever visit in the main game. Uh, you stick to one like continent. Uh, so I think they're saving like the entire world for later later games. And I'm definitely looking forward to an eventual sequel. Uh, hopefully, hopefully a, a sequel comes around. Um, so that that caught me off guard, but like the world itself, uh, you know, it's obviously huge. It's going to be huge when we get to the sequels. But the world in this game, it's actually not as big as I was expecting. But it's very dense and it's packed with detail. And each city and location you visit uh, has just so much to do. Uh, in fact, it, this game can be overwhelming, uh, not only with its combat system, but with the world and the side quests and the people you talk to. Uh, but the the story you basically you play this uh, kind of drifter character uh, and eventually you you have like a, what's called an awakening where you can actually see into people's souls uh, and see into your like your past lives uh, and you, you the whole the whole like the journey of the game you're, you're trying to get rid of this uh, effect because you, you your character has a hard time sleeping and uh, you'll, you'll apparently go mad uh, the longer you have to deal with this uh, kind of affliction. Um, so that's kind of the main plot, uh, and it's, you know, there's some twists and turns, uh, and I think the villain is, is quite interesting, and the whole, uh, the, like, the ending to this game I thought was really neat, and, and it poses some interesting questions. Uh, a lot of the themes uh, of this game I think are pretty thought-provoking, uh, but I don't know, I found the main plot just kind of, it wasn't very engaging because like the whole concept of souls it's something i've always found a bit silly in fiction and it it's it's a bit silly here but they do some interesting things with it uh you have like this hollow born problem throughout the world where infants are being born without souls uh and uh their parents will often kill them uh if this happens like it's a very common thing it, it's like this game is very dark and gritty I found which is those are like the aspects to the to, to the world I, I find quite fascinating uh, and the side quests in general in this game are I, I think they're actually far more engaging than the main plot because a lot of them are really dark and, and morbid uh, like there's like I actually I don't, I don't want to spoil some of these quest lines but they they really kind of surprise me uh, and I of course I have to mention the writing the writing in this game is superb. Uh, it's very descriptive, and there's a ton of reading you're gonna have to do in this game. Uh, in fact, most of this game you'll be spent you'll be spending most of your time with this game reading. Uh, so if that's if that's something that bothers you or you just don't like reading too much in video games, this is not gonna be for you. Uh, this is this is a hardcore role-playing game where you 
you really are, uh, you know, role playing a character. You make your character in the beginning. Uh, you have a, a six person party, uh, and some of them can be companions you find throughout the world, or you can make your own characters at like an inn. Um, but the cool thing with the, like, I, I just love the world in this game. I think it's a really fascinating fascinating world. A lot of the lore is really interesting. A lot of the characters are fantastic uh, with a lot of great character development. Uh, each of my companion characters, I loved just talking to them and getting their stories and finding out where they were from. Uh, and it made me want to visit these other areas of, of, of this world that I'm sure we'll get to in the sequels. Um, so yeah, the, the writing overall is fantastic. Uh, even in the main plot, but it, it's more... I don't know, I don't know. The main plot wasn't engaging to me, but I think other people might still enjoy it. It's just not something that was for me personally. Uh, but it was just interesting to find that the side quests were, to, at least for me, a lot more engaging. Uh, I, I got super into the side quests. I did every single side quest I could possibly find. Uh, I talked to every character I could possibly find. Uh, really engaging stuff. Uh, and based on the choices you make in dialogue, uh, like dialogue choices you make, you kind of gain a reputation in certain areas of the game, uh, and this will affect like the epilogue portion of the game. Uh, so your choices do matter in this game, which again I love. You can kind of play. There's no simple like good path or evil path. You can choose to be, you know, you can choose like like some of the the responses to people were I, I found were pretty hilarious. Uh, you can be a total dick in this game. I found it hard to do that. I was kind of like a very positive character. Um, but yeah, there's there's definitely a lot of replay value, uh, you know, that because that ending is is going to change depending on the choices you make, uh, and each side quest could play out completely differently depending on the choices you make. Uh, really fascinating stuff, uh, and I, I think overall the story, uh, with regards to like the side quests and the writing, uh, overall like that's that's like the highest point of this game. Uh, but yeah, l uh, let's talk uh, presentation. Uh, as as I'm sure you noticed from the this g the gameplay, uh, pre-rendered backgrounds. Uh, absolutely beautiful. The environments in this game are stunning. Uh, there's not an, an, a crazy amount of environment variety. Uh, you'll generally be going through like villages, cities, uh, caves, uh, a few castles, some ruins, and, and forests. Uh, which, it makes sense because that's the, the continent you're in. Uh, but each location feels like handcrafted. Each dungeon you go in is handcrafted and it's they're amazing. I love the dungeons in this game. Uh, one dungeon in particular is like this multi-floor dungeon. Like it, it feels like Diablo, the original Diablo, where you're just going deeper and deeper into this dungeon. And the the story there, the side quest there, I thought it was extremely fascinating. Uh, I had a great time going through that dungeon. Uh, but yeah, like the world itself is is really interesting. It looks fantastic. Like uh, the game definitely has a dated look to it. I mean, it's going for that style, that old 90s computer RPG style, but I, I think the game looks great. Uh, the animations are, are great. Uh, you know, you can zoom the camera in and out and you get some nice details in the environments. Uh, some people might be a bit like, oh, this looks so this looks so old, but I don't know. I, I think it looks great. I think the game looks fantastic. Uh, Audio-wise, uh, fantastic voice acting. Each of your companions is fully voiced. A lot of the characters you'll meet are fully voiced. Uh, but there is a lot of reading. Uh, there are definitely, like, it, the whole game isn't voice acted by any means, but the voice acting that is here is really good. Um, the music, I have to mention the music. The music in this game is phenomenal. Uh, it reminded me of a lot of Morrowind's soundtrack, which I really loved. Uh, just really grand uh, themes to this game, some, like, more melodic tunes, some, like, very sad kind of themes. Uh, I don't know, the music, I, I, it's, it's, it's... It's almost hard to describe, but if you've played Morrowind, you might kind of understand like the kind of mood this this soundtrack gives off. Uh, it's 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 it really kind of blew me away. I was not expecting the soundtrack to be as good as it as it was in this game. Uh, so yeah, presentation wise, uh, the game's top notch. Uh, I, I I really liked it from a presentation standpoint. Um, so okay, let's let's talk about the gameplay. Uh, there's a lot to cover here. This game is is fairly complex. Uh, like I said, uh, you kind of create your character in the beginning. There's uh, like 11 or 12 different classes. Uh, and each class plays out completely differently uh, from another. I, I went with a fighter, with, which is maybe kind of a boring class to start with, but uh, as someone new to this type of game, I wanted to go with something a little basic uh, to kind of get used to the game. I, I did choose easy mode. Uh, yeah, I'm a bit of a noob there. Um, and, you know, even though I chose easy mode, the game's not that easy, uh, especially in the beginning. Uh, the beginning of this game is very tough. Uh, it's like the enemies will just completely destroy you. Like there's no auto scaling or anything like that. So 
Uh, you can find yourself in some areas where the enemies are way more powerful than you are, so you might have to level up a bit and come back to certain areas. Uh, I did find, though, like for the second half of the game, and especially towards the ending of the game, it, I got a bit overpowered because I was doing so many side quests. Uh, I, I leveled up so much. Uh, so yeah, like the final boss, for instance, was a complete joke. Uh, but again, that's just because I, I really took my time to explore this world and do all the side quests. If you're just trying to rush the main story, you're probably going to have a harder time, and it's probably going to remain consistently challenging throughout. Um, but yeah, you make your character, you choose your class, you have a six-person party. Uh, combat is is real-time, but you can pause battle, which uh, is very interesting, and you can kind of issue commands to your party members. They don't have actual AI. Like, you'll, you'll if you, like, kind of drag your cursor over each of your characters and then click on a certain enemy, all of your characters will attack that enemy, like auto-attack, but you yourself have to issue commands for each of your party members and, and use all your skills, or all their skills yourself. Uh, you know, it's the, the combat system is very tactical. You really have to consider the skills you have, uh, the buffs you have, the, the you know, the, the buffs enemies have. Uh, you got to take positioning into account. Uh, it's It can get very overwhelming, especially when you get six uh, a six-person party, uh, and each character can have so many different skills. You have certain skills that you can use per encounter, uh, and then certain skills you have, can use per rest. Uh, basically, you can use like camping supplies to camp out in dungeons, and all your characters will get full health back. Uh, or you can rest at an inn to get your, your health back. Because this game uses a weird health system where it, you have endurance and health. Uh, where once your endurance runs out, your health starts getting, uh, you start taking damage in terms of your health. Once your health's gone, that character's dead. Your characters can die permanently in this game. Uh, so it's one of those games where you really have to quick save often. And I found myself loading and reloading quite often because sometimes my characters would just flat out die. Uh, so you gotta worry about endurance and health. Uh, endurance can be easily, um, like if you if your character is knocked out in battle, they lose their, their, all their endurance, they'll get knocked out. Um, but if, if you complete the battle, uh, their endurance will get refilled again. So in order to actually lose a battle, all your characters have to get knocked out basically and lose all their health. Uh, it's an interesting system. It makes the, it makes the combat even more complex. But uh, I, I you know I kind of liked it. I like the resting system where you know you're kind of going deeper and deeper into a dungeon, and you might find yourself running out of camping supplies. Although admittedly, I never found myself in that position really, uh, except for like that multi-floor dungeon I was mentioning earlier. Uh, so you kind of there's like a risk reward system. Do you know do I delve deeper into this dungeon or do I you know backtrack and go back to an inn and rest up because my guys are getting low on health? Um, but yeah, uh, level ups. Uh, there's like, I think there's like 12 or 13 uh, levels in this game. You level pretty slowly, uh, but in this game, level leveling up is very meaningful. Uh, your characters get a huge boost in strength and health and endurance, and the skills you get to choose uh, for each of your level ups are, are very interesting. There's all these kind of skills you can choose when you level up. Uh, so leveling up is a time consuming a time consuming process, but it's really fun and exciting. Uh, and character builds are vast. Uh, even though I chose a fighter, uh, you can go with many different fighters. You can choose to maybe be a, a two-handed weapon uh, type fighter, or maybe a more defensive fighter, or uh, an offensive fighter. Uh, so each kind of class has a, like many different builds you can go for. Uh, like the replay value in this game is staggering, and just the, just the depth in terms of combat and role playing is, is staggering as well. It, it's it's really impressive. Uh, there's like a sneak mode you can you can find yourself in where you can like sneak around and detect traps and traps will fuck you up in this game. Uh, you really have to be careful of traps. Um, but yeah, there's there's different stats that each of your characters can have. Like there's mechanics uh, where the higher mechanics you have, you can you know open locked chests easier. Uh, there's like survival a survival stat where you can use like food items and that your food items will will heal you for more and things like that. There's like lore scrolls you can have for your, like, your magic users. Like, th there's all this stuff that I'm sure I'm just forgetting right now. Like, it's it's a complicated, complex uh, combat system. Like, there's a lot to this game, uh, but it's very satisfying learning it. And uh, the learning curve is a bit rough. It took me a while to get used to this game's mechanics, but once I did, it was really fun. Um, but yeah, uh, also, like, depending on your stats, like, certain... Uh, like, you'll have certain dialogue options that will only appear uh, if your character has a certain stat to a certain amount. Like, if their perception is really high, uh, different dialogue options will change. So you have, like, that aspect to the game. Uh, you have, like, certain sections where you might try to, like, 
like click on a, a part of the environment and you can have like they're like these dialogue sections where it, it like they're very descriptive and it shows like oh do you want to climb this rock surface it seems very dangerous and, and you might try to climb it but if you don't have like a, a chisel or something like that it, it could go disastrously wrong for you uh, so you have that kind of that kind of element to the game uh, there's a stronghold component where you have like your own stronghold where you can like hire like people to guard it uh, you can like send off send your companions on these different quests to bring you back loot to, to your stronghold. You can upgrade it. Uh, it's interesting, but I found it kind of a waste of time, unfortunately, because uh, you, you put a lot of money into it, and I found like the rewards just weren't ever really worth it. Uh, although by the end of the game, I had so much money that I eventually did uh, get a bit into the stronghold aspect. Uh, I just, I don't know, I wish the stronghold part of the game was a bit more rewarding. Uh, and to that end, like, the loot in this game is not, it's not that exciting. Uh, you know, you've, there's a bunch of weapons and armor that you can equip, but, um, and a lot of it can be pretty useful. I found, like, the more unique, uh, weapons and armor you find are, are, are pretty useful in terms of, like, what skills they'll give you, but, uh, and, you know, you'll, your characters will look different depending on the, the equipment you got, you get, but for whatever reason, I, d I didn't find it really ever exciting any time I got, like, a new weapon, because, uh, I, I think that has to do with more like the damage output, like like the weapons you find, they're never going to do an insane amount of damage. Uh, you might find a new weapon and it could replace your sword that you're using, but it might do one or two extra like points of damage. You're mainly looking at weapons for like the skills they'll give you. Um, and you can you can enchant your your weapons and armor you find there's there's there is a crafting system in here like it, it's it's crazy like this is a, a pure role-playing game uh, and it's it's you know it's addictive I found myself insanely addicted to this game I'd play for hours on end um, so yeah the combat system uh, it's very fun but at the same time I don't I don't know. I don't think it's an amazing combat system uh, it's they, the AI I think is a bit it's a bit, well, not really the, well, I guess, like, the partner AI, like, their their pathfinding can be a bit wonky, uh, and sometimes, like, I found, like, my companions, like, I would tell them to attack certain enemies, and after a while, they would, like, stop attacking, or if you kill a certain enemy, I found sometimes your AI companions would have a hard time kind of locking onto a different enemy and to start attacking them. Uh, there's some AI issues here and there. Um, it, the combat can be frustrating at certain points. I, I definitely found myself frustrated. Um... But overall, it is pretty fun. Although I, I, I do think just exploring the world and doing these side quests uh, was was probably the more engaging part of the game. Uh, yeah, gameplay wise, it's it's fantastic. Um, but yeah, uh, what am I missing here? Um, I mean, I, I I'm, I'm sure I'm missing a, a bunch in terms of gameplay. But I mean, it's it's this type of game where if you haven't played a, a game of this type, I highly recommend Pillars of Eternity. I think it's you know, for a newcomer like me, it was easy to get into, uh, mainly thanks to that easy mode. Uh, I, I do wonder what, like, hardcore computer RPG fans think of this game. I mean, it was generally well-received, but I don't know. I, I'd be curious to, to think, because it might be dumbed down in certain ways. I'm not sure. I, again, I, I'm pretty ignorant on that, on that, but um, it would definitely be interesting to hear those people's uh, opinions of this game. But uh, very, yeah, very much looking forward to, like, hopefully the eventual sequel to this game because uh this world i think is really fascinating and i want to see more of it um but yeah uh that's it guys uh i want to thank you for watching and i'll see you next time